Hello and welcome by AEA's Art Channel. My name is Ilke van Wiersma and today I'd like to share with you guys how I made, uh, how I painted this uh, great horned owl and therefore my mainly colors were uh, black and white so as you can see and with a exception for the eyes I painted those uh, orange but the rest of uh, the body and in the background is uh, only uh, black and white and um, yeah, using some great, uh, different great tones there. Well, I think it's very helpful when you're starting out painting or drawing to uh, start out with black and white because you don't have to focus on the colors yet. You, you can uh, just only focus on the details and the uh, 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 darks and lights, which are, are both uh, very important when you're starting out and trying to make your uh, artwork as photorealistic as you like. And uh, so therefore, uh, for those who are just starting out in art or have a, a bit of difficult to get it as realistic as they like, maybe you want to start out with only black and white. And this photo I found on Pixabay and it already was in black and white for the exception for the eyes. But if you have a nice photo but it is in color, you can uh, easily upload it in uh, Photoshop and make it uh, black and white there. So if you have a nice photo you wanted to practice on, and uh, just upload it in Photoshop and make it black and white so you can use it as a start for uh, making as realistic artwork as you like. And uh, yeah, I experienced while I was working on this one and I thought that I have to keep it in mind for those who are just starting out of have a bit of a difficult to, uh, difficulty to make it as uh, realistic as uh, they like. So therefore maybe you want to give it a try. It's a, a really, really nice experience. So. Um, that's it and done. Let's start the tutorial. And I'm filling in this canvas with a uh, mid-tone grey. And um, I think I used about two layers to get a nice rich coverage of this canvas. And then I uh, drew back my owl on, onto the, the canvas. And I'm now starting with the eyes and with the beak and that's just personal preference. I like to uh, start with uh, most of the times with the eyes of my subject. It makes it a bit easier for me to judge where my other details should go. And also uh, it is easier for me to judge where uh, the lights and the darks and how dark the darks uh, should be and that kind of stuff. So therefore I like to start with the eyes and also it makes uh, the subject uh, in this case, it's uh, it's all more uh, brings it more to life when uh, yeah when you start with the eyes and uh, with the beak. So therefore, uh, that's my uh, preference there to uh, to start with those uh, subjects. And from there on, I'm building in my layers. I'm now making uh, some textures and some details in the eyes. And later on in this painting, I will glaze over with the orange of the Liquitex Basics, that's the color, of the, that's the brand for my acrylic paints that I'm using for this uh, painting. It's also my uh, favorite paint, so most of the times I'm using that, uh, that uh, paint. But the orange is quite uh, translucent, so therefore I don't have to use much water to uh, glaze over later on uh, over these uh, details uh, in the eyes what I just uh, made. And um, yeah, I like to use a lot of uh, water for my acrylic paints. There is a glazing medium also from uh, Liquitex that I uh, use uh, sometimes. And when I'm using that, it's uh, most of the time because I have to glaze on a, a really big area and I don't want to end up to, with harsh lines. So therefore I like to use the uh, Liquitex uh, glazing medium. But on the little sections, uh, as for example, on the, his eyes, I like to use some water. And there are some tutorials on um, uh, about talking about uh, that it isn't good for uh, for painters to use water with an acrylic paint, but it isn't completely true. It's just um, I don't know why that uh, that sort of tutorials uh, this, uh, are out there because I have never have any problems with uh, using water with my acrylic paint. So if your canvas is from a good brand and your paint are uh, from a good brand, you shouldn't have any problems with using water within your acrylic paints. And I like using water. It's It uh, makes us, uh, the paint a little bit thinner and that I like, uh, that I'm liking for uh, using it for la uh, layers. So therefore I like to use water instead of glazing medium, but that is also personal preference, of course. And I'm just building up slowly my details and just really watching my reference photo and what which direction the feathers are going, that is very, very important. And I'm just building up from there. And if I, may, I made a little mistake, it doesn't matter that much. I'm just painting over that and I'm just building up, building up until I like it and until 
I have the feeling there is enough uh, depth in my feathers and I uh, then start layering normally color and in this case it was just different gray tones because I'm painting in black and white so I don't need that color and like I said in the intro it's a very nice practice for uh, people who are just starting out painting and would like to paint a realistic, at least uh, photorealism, it is a nice, really, really nice practice for, uh, for you to uh, start with this because you don't have to watch the colors that much, you just uh, only watch your values and your details. And I'm building up and I'm using different brushes there, I also use my uh, flat brushes, my filbert flat, uh, no I'm sorry, the filbert round brushes and I use the side of the round brushes and that gives a nice indication of the, those uh, longer and bigger feathers on his uh, neck and on his wings, what I'm doing here now, that's uh, with my uh, round filbert and I'm using the side of the brushes because the most of those feathers are uh, one side is black and the other side is white with some uh, stripes on them and those were quite easily to make with this brush. I just want to give the indication of those feathers. I'm not really super focusing on the detail and if I have enough feathers, if uh, I'm seeing five, uh, for example, five feathers in one section on my reference photo and I have three or four, that's okay because nobody will uh, notice that. And, um, all our people should have the reference photo, but most of the time that's not the case, so uh, therefore you should be uh, fine not com completely copying your reference photo exactly. You just want to go for photorealism, photo realism, that was the word, <laughs> and uh, therefore you need the indication of feathers. And just building up, sometimes I'm uh, really not satisfied with my painting and I think, oh my god, I don't know if I'm gonna make this, I don't know how to do this. And I just have to tell myself that I have to build up and take it easy, take it little steps and just really watch your reference photo and try to think, I, um, I, I, yeah, to make a plan how to achieve that look. And the more you paint, the easier it will get because you have more experience and it may uh, sound a bit funny, but for example, if you are painting grass and uh, you are um, yeah, trying a different technique there and you have quite, um, you're satisfied with the technique, the technique may uh, be useful for feathers, you don't know, because those feathers are not the same, there are different sort of feathers, the uh, one uh, uh, is shorter than the other one, uh, the, there are uh, feathers who are bigger and smaller and all that kind of stuff, so therefore you might use different techniques you are using for different subjects, they may came, um, came on handy when, uh, when painting other subjects, and that's why it is nice and um, yeah, if you ask me, quite important to practice as, lo as much as you can, because you wanna, you're gonna discover different techniques who are very very useful for other projects. That's how I uh, learned and I'm trying, sometimes I'm trying to copy uh, my techniques of other painters, but the more you paint, the more you will learn as well. And this is the uh, photo of the end uh, piece. It's uh, looking a bit darker than in my uh, tutorial because of the daylight lamps. I keep saying that because I don't know how to solve the problem, but this is the closest of how the painting is looking in daylight. So that was the tutorial and I thought it would be nice to go a little bit over the brushes I uh, use and especially the red brushes. First of all I like to share uh, that I'm using this brush, it's a uh, Bob Ross fur brush, uh, a wild fur brush, I hope I said it quite well. And it has the brushes like this. You can make a uh, Easily uh, straight uh, lines, different, uh, I think about uh, maybe seven, eight uh, different lines in one stroke, but they are quite, quite straight, so keep that in mind. It, it will not look uh, realistic if you use the brush uh, very often. So um, I thought it would be nice for me, especially for, the, or especially for me uh, to uh, um, yeah, get a red brush that has a more, uh, can make more different lines. And I couldn't find it online, I tried different ones and I never found that one that I like. And then I thought, well, maybe I can make it, make my own um, rake brush. So therefore, I, uh, this, is, this is not the rake brush, but this is the, the brush I used. It's just a simple generic brush you can uh, buy in basically every store. <laughs> 
and I uh, used my scissors and I cut off some bristles of um, the um, brush and it looks now like this I hope you can see it it's really really rough yeah I hope I can maybe I can do it like this oh. and I used my scissors to just cut off those hairs and now it makes uh, quite some different lines so that is a uh, very useful for those little details and different textures because you don't want end up making the same lines over and over again because that will not look good so therefore it's quite easy I just uh, like I said I had my scissors and cut off some uh, uh, hairs of the, uh, the brush and uh, yeah like I said it makes a nice texture or uh, textured lines and it, I found it really really helpful for making um, fur of little feathers I also use this uh, brush for my uh, wolf painting I will have a card pop up uh, here somewhere and I use this brush a lot on that one because it's so nice to work with it makes it uh, much much more uh, realistic those lines and you can easily glaze over them tone them as if uh, um, tone them as much as you like and uh, yeah so therefore I found it very very helpful so that was a little tip there I hope you like this tutorial I hope you like my other tutorials and if you like you can uh, follow me on um, Instagram uh, I have to be yeah Instagram Facebook my own website and if you like this uh, tutorial please give it a thumbs up and of course if you like this tutorial my other tutorials please subscribe to my channel I would really like that I see it as a compliment for my work so I hope you subscribe and I hope to see you at one of my next videos bye bye